You're listening to India Bio Speaks, your one-stop resource for science, news, and careers. Hello and welcome back to In Conversation with a Mentor. The guest of this episode is Dr. Sanjay Misra. Dr. Misra has recently joined as a scientist age at the Department of Biotechnology India. However, this podcast was recorded when he was serving as the advisor and head of the Inspire Division at the Department of Science and Technology India. Dr. Misra is also the former advisor and head of the Kiran Division at DST. In his uh, diverse career path, he held various academic positions, including a professorship at Sivnada University, Delhi, Queensland University of Technology, Brisbane, Australia, and the Institute of Engineering and Technology, Lucknow. Enjoy listening and please send us your feedback at IndiaBioSpeaks at the rate IndiaBioscience.org. Hello, Dr. Mishra. Welcome to In Conversation with a Mentor. Hello, India Biosciences. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Mishra. We are happy to have you today. Dr. Mishra, you are a mechanical engineer and you have a PhD in biomechanical engineering. You started your career as a faculty and then shifted to science administration by joining DST after more than 20 years of service in teaching and research. What made you decide to do that? I joined the department, particularly with two, three reasons. Because A, whatever I have done in 22 years of my career as academia and my experience as Indian teaching, research, university sector, college sector, school sector, the DST to me was providing me a platform where I can make impacts and changes and reforms at across the spectrum everywhere, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, which no other scientific lab's position or some other job would have satisfied me. That's one. And second point, you know, as many of you would have, you know, lived abroad, you'll see there's always a, you know, your heart always beats for India. Whatever you say, whether you live in Harvard or MIT, Oxford, but your heart is always in India. I mean, I come from, you know, that category. So that was second reason to come back. So when we stay in one profession for a long time, we create our own comfort zone. A career switch means coming out of the zone and start something entirely new. How difficult it was to switch careers and more importantly, how difficult it was to switch countries while switching careers. I think uh, you're very right when you say that whatever profession or career anyone chooses after a decade or so, everybody develops his or her comfort zone. And in general, I think we are designed to remain in comfort zone, not to move out. But if I have to describe myself in a single word, probably I will say explorer. So probably I'm born explorer, new things, trying new places, new institutions, uh, new ways of interventions, you know, like, so, so this is kind of in my DNA. So that's why you can see that, in, you know, I have moved to the three continents, you know, I did my part of work in Lucknow and Banaras, then moved to Oxford, then came back and then again moved to US, then again came back to India, then again moved to Australia. So, so all these movements were enriching my experience. So all these things gave me a very rich experience about the various good practices, benchmarks, societies, cultures, and all these varieties have helped me a lot in designing new programs at DST, in designing new interventions, filling the gaps, what program is required to fulfill this particular gap area in the science sector in India, whether it is at a PDF level or it is at a school level. All these things has helped me a lot, tremendously. I was lucky to have all these wide variety of experiences. Since we are talking about new initiatives at DST, let us talk about an INSPIRE program as you are heading the division currently. Could you please tell us about the INSPIRE Manak program, which you started? What is the program and who are the beneficiaries? Now, INSPIRE is one of the interventions designed by the Department of Science and Technology to promote and to supply the best quality human resources, future human resources into the area of science and technology. 
Now this program starts at school level. So there are there is one component which is designed to be implemented from class six to class 10th level school level. Then you have other components which work at college level, then master's level, PhD level, postdoctoral level and faculty level. So you've got all areas. It's like a ladder from class six to postdoctoral level. Now coming back to particularly Manak, this is very, very uh, unique program. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, probably no other country is running a similar program of this magnitude and size. Now I'll put in this way. The objective of the Manak program is to inculcate the innovative capacity or innovative thinking among our school children. This is the broad thing because it, when we say if a student is innovative and becomes a critical thinker and have an out of box thinking, then this program is designed to scaffold him or her, provide some kind of a support mechanism, recognize, reward, mentor to a higher level. And what it does is this program invites applications from all the schools of India. Now, uh, saying all schools of India looks very simple, but when I say all schools from class six to class 12, their number is about five lakh. In other words, all the principals of schools, whether they are government school, private schools, they are entitled to submit two or three ideas, which are novel ideas based on science and which have a little value, societal value. They must be problem solving and more important, they must be novel. And when we have these ideas, like uh, last year we have received 6.43 lakh ideas were received. And then we select roughly last couple of years, we were selecting 50,000 plus ideas. And then the 10,000 rupees, which is the award money for the selected ideas, we transfer into the student's bank account. And then we request the student that use my money, the 10,000 rupees, convert your ideas into the model prototype, do some research, go to nearby lab, we provide support system. And then at the end of another two months, you know, these students are requested to come to a district level exhibition where all the best ideas were selected from a district. They are showcased and a jury comes, filters 10% of best ideas, which come to the state level project exhibition committee. Again, a jury comes, selects 10% of best ideas from each and every state of India, come to the national level. And then again, a jury comes, we select the best ideas. So this is a kind of a pyramid here where there is a filtering of the ideas and come to the national level. Finally, we select 60 ideas which are rewarded by the Manak Awards and these 60s, they go to the Rashpati Bhavan for showcasing their ideas. They also, some of them will also go to Sakura Science Program in Japan. And more important, some of the ideas which have commercial potential, the DST and NIF together with the help of the institution, we provide the support system to put an IP patent or a design patent. And uh, I'm not sure about number, but I think more than 50 or 60 patents have been already applied. And two or three have already been commercialized where they are licensed to the commercial institution. So this is the whole, you know, like structure and the activities under the Manak program. You have mentored PhD students, master students when you were a faculty, right? And yes. now you are, yes. And now you are running the Inspire program, the Manak program. I, I could see that the Manak program is very much close to your heart. So how has the mentorship experience, you know, helped you to develop, to make this program better? I'll put in a slightly different platform, not only Manak. Uh, my previous experience as a faculty in India and abroad, as a postdoctoral researcher, as a teacher, and of course, you know, uh, as a student in engineering colleges, all those experiences have helped me to enrich and strengthen the not only Manak program, but all my other programs as well, like as a head of Kiran division, I will briefly tell, and also as a head of the Inspire program where we are dealing with fellowships at PhD level. So not only Manak, but across the board, all programs will benefit from my experience. In what manner, I would like to just share a few things. Whenever I am I'm looking a program, I always look from the other side of the table that if the end beneficiary is a PhD student. I'll recall my days as a PhD student and look the program is good or bad or are there any gaps? Are there any barriers which I have faced in my personal life? And if I am not convinced, I will not do it. I will make sure that that problem is solved, which I have faced in my personal experience. Number one. 
different in terms of the manak program if i take then i would see not the well up to date good resource school of delhi mumbai bangalore i would look at the a typical average government school or a municipal school of a rural india and see that whether my portal my system is able to cater the needs of that particular school or not i'm just giving one example it's specific that very often we design a portal and we said that every everything is online fine it looks fantastic but the reality is that there are places in districts in india where there is a power shortage where there is no internet connection where there is a low level of internet literacy how those people will be able to address my program so this is just one example so i will try to look second is a language barrier i myself was you know like uh, partly born and brought up in the up so hindi has been my medium and i love hindi you know of course my english has been into the kind of official language or a, you know language i was you know is my you know engineering college i was taught everything but still i believe that there will be a lot of students especially in the north northern belt or even in the other states where maybe bangla is a medium of instruction so a student and the teacher whether it is he or she is a school teacher there may be a language barrier so you will see in manak immediately after joining i made it that we need to have 14 languages at least 15 languages so i am trying to look at the barriers or the problems faced by the my audience or end user of my program and i'll try to change and reform modify the program portal so of course uh, there are limitation of time and resources at dst also so i cannot say that each and everything is 100% perfect i'll not claim that but at least i try to you know uh, try to mold and do maximum possible you mentioned about initiatives for phds and postdocs you are the former advisor and head of the kiran division at dst which is a dedicated division for women researchers so could you please tell us what is this division and what are the new initiatives coming under this division yes i have worked as the head of kiran division for almost two and a half years and i try to first understand the problem myself you know like uh, that uh, why the dst started a special division a special program which are women centric and you know first few months i myself studied the extent of the problem and the socio economic and administrative reasons and the concept of leaky pipeline why the women you know like uh, uh, we lose lot of talented women in the process of education and the workforce so i studied all those things and then i tried to do couple of interventions design several programs strengthen the current program so one thing which i wish to share with the audience i think many of them may know but many may not know that current divisions the, the the flagship program has been to bring back those women who have a break in their career because that is one of the basic barriers why we were losing women from the professional mainstream or workforce because of the family and because of the mobility issues they move from place a to place b and uh, caring of the children so the, the scheme was a was b and was c has been designed to fulfill those ones but apart from that the one new intervention which uh, took during my tenure of course it was supported by the government right from the top to the uh, my division that how do we bring more girls into stem fold because if you do an intervention at phd level or at ug level then that is at the too late because then we discovered that it is the class 10th level where the first junction starts where a student whether he is a boy or girl chooses the first you know like a stream what to study at grade 11 and 12 if if a girl chooses commerce or arts or sociology or some other subject no matter what you do she cannot come back into stem area so that is where the maximum leakage uh, again i would like to reiterate as i was saying that i am firm believer of all subjects i do not want that a society should everybody should become a scientist or engineer no we need musician we need philosophers we need you know like uh, <laughs> players we need economist but especially for girl student the data shows that there are enough number of girls who are interested otherwise into stem but because of the lack of the motivation lack of resources lack of guidance lack of the family support or maybe the science is not available in the nearby school so there are many factors 
which inhibit those girls who otherwise would have opted for a science career but they do not take because of these barriers so my job was to remove these barriers so that these girls at uh, you know especially at class 9 10 10th level prepare them for science and stem so that they choose at 11th and 12th level the stem subjects and after 12th preferably they should go for the areas or the subjects where the women are under represented into the stem so so this is about the vigyan jyoti similarly there is one more intervention which again i think i'm really proud of as an indian is that we designed a program uh, an intervention called gati is gender advancement transforming institution idea is very simple it simply measures the gender advancement at each and every university level or department level or at a lab level and then make a objective criteria and then we can grade them how good and not good the institution is for women in terms of the providing support mechanism providing the promotional avenues the policies the physical facilities how friendly your institution is for women if you can measure make an index and then plot it then you can see and this will give a kind of a sensitization to the policy makers especially the top people sitting at the labs and the universities and the other institutions to look gender as an important ingredient for the development it has just started and uh, in, in addition to that there was another program which we started this the often there are women who are permanently employed in institution but again because of the family reason they want to move in a different city or sometimes they have to move to different city and resign from the job so dst started a program called mobility program where permanently employed women can take a break of 3 to 5 years with a fellowship so they are on leave or lien from the host institution and they can join their family and they can you know they can work in a different city of their choice from dst fellowship for a 3 to 5 years hopefully because otherwise we will have lost them into the uh, from the workforce you know pipe would have leaked so we are we are trying to arrest this leakage so that's another program which we started in the dst great to know about the uh, mobility program the vigyan jyoti program and also the gati program i think which is something entirely new that you are doing and uh, it's great to know that dst is putting emphasis on ranking based on gender talking about gender and women are there any distinct obstacles that women face while coming back to research after a pause or in general in research it would be great to hear about this both in terms of access to leaders or mentors and the availability of opportunities shruti you have already given the answer in the question <laughs> as far as the obstacles and barrier are concerned you have rightly pointed out that the lack of the mentors support system or guidance that is one primary and second you have again rightly pointed out the lack of the opportunities available especially for the women and again when i say women women at the age of the let's say 20s after phd gap of 1 2 year it's lot easier to be absorbed by the workforce or anywhere but women having a gap of 10 years let's say after msc or after phd uh, the, the current situation of india as we all know there is a there is a fierce competition there are less positions and we have got more talented people i mean that's a fact and probably the women become loser because of this competition because there are maybe the men or other women who do not have break in their career they generally they are able to uh, get those positions whether they are contractual position post doctor whatever now having said that again this is a problem which in my opinion cannot be solved by government intervention or a dst scheme because this requires a change in mindset of the people and i say people whether the people are in government or in private sector or in industries okay i will share one of my own experience just to highlight the point when i was offered faculty position in iits my age was i think because i moved to post doctoral and came back to india my age was i think 34 ish and someone i remember told me that okay in general if you are 35 plus the coveted institutions they don't like to take people who are 35 plus as assistant professor or faculty or a scientist so i was thinking that well as a man i had no break in my career but think about another case women who 
who after getting married has a you know first baby maybe second baby then it's the clear cut case of the 5 to 7 years of a break in the career where she is doing again i will say more important job for the society but i can see that if somebody comes with a very strong cv with 40 probably many institution with a gap they may not entertain that is the case in india whereas in australia or in america i have seen these things are discounted they take care of the gap and they normalize the cvs of somebody who having a break of 7 years versus somebody doesn't have a break so they are unequal so that is where women get the kind of a competition it is unequal competition and again i say that i'm not saying that giving an extra favor to women what i'm saying that give them equal playing field that's all that's all give them equal playing field that will solve the problem and last point is that the good thing is there's a lot of the good news is coming from the private sector look at the companies there are programs where they are paying that return to work or you know like second inning or second uh, you know opportunity so they've got some programs where they are targeting those women who want to come back into mainstream career after breaking the gap similar thing need to be adopted by everyone in the you know system my last question is now that you are not directly with academia do you miss being in academia actively yeah. i can say in one word i miss my freedom freedom within courts as a professor or as a university teacher i have lived and enjoyed the full freedom of my work and the only constraint i ever had in my 22 years of my career was the weekly time table where i have to have monday third period thursday 4:30 to 5 o'clock and that used to be maybe 5 hours in a week that was only constraint i have lived so the first problem which came to me after joining dst is like how do i reconcile myself from 9 to 5 job where i have to sit in office because i have never done in my 22 years so that's freedom second is in academics universe is your limit you know if you take my own example if you look my publications i started from bone fracture healing looking at the mechanical environment of the bone fracture bone osteogenesis stress strain which is application of mechanics mechanical engineering into the bone biology later on in my pdf i was looking on the paleontology how the bones have evolved from dinosaur bones to the human bones vertebrate biology i moved into vertebrate biology and that was for one year in my pdf i was lucky that my supervisor was saying that sanjay there is no barrier you think whatever you like nobody will pay you money just to be thinking something new something which is interesting that was in academia and i published paper where i was trying to 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 compare the, the shape and size and mechanical properties of bone from rat to mouse to cow to dogs to to elephants you know like this is a kind of uh, allometry of bones then i moved into vertebrate paleontology to the dinosaur bones and then i moved to the osteoporosis research and then i moved later on when i moved to australia as a teacher couple of my publication are how do we teach engineering what is the best way it's more of educational philosophies of teaching engineering then i moved into the areas of online learning and teaching e learning so i'm trying to say that in academia this is a huge variety of opportunities and my request and suggestion strong suggestion to the your audience will be especially the younger one do what your heart says do not try to do from the peer pressure do where you feel thrilled do something which is making a mass impact i mean i joined dst because i believe that i am able to have the impact of several thousands and lakhs of lives so again whether it is a research or administration anywhere you are my suggestion will be do what you like which satisfies you but yes i think coming back to your question my first and last love you can say is academia and uh, sometime i joke that if you know god comes to me that sanjay what do you want to become in your next life i will say a university teacher a teacher full stop nothing else wow so starting from engineering to paleontology to vertebrate biology to how to teach engineering it's a long way that you have come thank you dr mishra for your time and for sharing your journey with us i'm sure your journey will inspire many and will give courage to those willing to switch careers at a later stage of life 
thank you thank you very much for giving me this opportunity probably this is the first time that you know i am able to tell uh, all 360 degree angle about my own professional journey thank you all for listening to india bio speaks in conversation it mentor we look forward to receiving your comments and feedback thank you if you are passionate about scientific research communication outreach and science education as we are please connect and engage with us and here are some ways that you can do so visit our website at www.indiabioscience.org subscribe to our newsletters write for us and join our online discussion forum at discuss.indiabioscience.org advertise jobs grants and events in the life sciences on our website and feel free to contact us anytime at hello at indiabioscience.org until next time enjoy your science and stay engaged to enable change